Oh, you I love to crying. see it. Aren't you happy, I Avery? I'm crying inside. I'm still crying. You, you get inside. to see Game and Gladiators maybe win yet another finals. And oh, you man, get to watch Quinn I mean, win with Leshrac. Quinn Leshrac for Gaming Gliders in a Grand Final. This is really taking me back to like <laughs> five weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> Just really, really hitting those nostalgia spots right there. I think that's what we all wanted some more of. And we'll see if mm. Bet Boom can deal with it where nobody else could. There's a reason they went back for the Disco Pony. It's because that man, he's got some good moves. Yeah, he's a little obsessed, but... Uh... This is a good start. We're going to be getting an early first blood. Duraccio going to be shot down by GPK. So GPK will have the first blood advantage. They're still going to get two bounty runes too. So very much ahead. A uh, fast bottle for Mr. GPK. And I think Bet Boom did this exact move versus LGD in game one, if I remember. It was one of the games in that series where they had a like, delayed smoke. They went up onto the high ground of that dire bounty rune and came down the ramp onto a lone hero that was like, oh, they're a... They're not showing, so they're just trading. Yeah. And that got them a first blood that game, too. So, that boom. Really pulling out the playbook here. Going to run it back and have it work a second time and put GBK in a much stronger position than he was game one, where he was in a bad matchup that did not start too well for him. Here, he's on a good matchup with first blood. And the kills keep and flowing. And second blood, apparently. Very fast start for Bet Boom. This is what we're used to seeing them. I think gaming traditionally win lanes through some of the small mechanics and just stronger laning prowess. But I think Bet Boom have shown their winning lanes this turn, honestly, by just killing you. More. Yeah, they some kill more. your ass. Yeah, they just murder you <laughs> and use the XP to murder you some more. So I think this is a good sign for them already, especially with a Tidehunter lineup, because if you lose this game too, with the save Ench and the pure Tide, this has been their go-to strat for the tournament. Like when they need a win, when they want to up the priority on a hero, it's been Tidehunter. I go back to that LG series. They won the first game with Tidehunter. Second game, they first faced it. Right. And so here, they're bringing back the pure Tide. They don't care what the hell it's playing against. They don't care what the matchups are. They just have faith that he's going to get mega farmed with the Meteor Hammer, take the tower, and give them the team fight and the ores they need to match the Beastmaster, which gaming ran back. -uh. I mean, the upside for gaming is they have the same heroes. The downside is you're letting Bet Boom know what's coming. And there's a little suck for the boar as he meets his maker. This is a dangerous lane. I like the fact that they pointed out on panel, like, bet boom, they get these combos, which is where the killer mentality comes from, right? If you have a good combo, probably means you have really good kill power. Lich Juggernaut, they already got the early boar kill. They got the early, you know, they were a part of the first blood. They got a second kill into the lane. I mean, this is a lane that it is not a free win for Beastmaster techies like it usually is. No. And even if you just go even with a Jug, most of the time you're happy. Because Jug is not really a lane dominator. He, he can CS pretty well, but as long as you're up there in the net worth, you're going to be content with this lane for Bet Boom because your other two are the ones that you want to exert the pressure on, especially this off lane. You want to make Duraccio's early game as rough as possible. Save. He's going to have a free matchup here versus the Undying. The downside of that pick for gaming is they picked it into the inch, which kind of gives Save a lot of room to operate here. And Bet Boom, they did address the Undying a decent amount, which I think you have to do based on the impact they had game one. They have okay. the Shredder for the Tombstone. They yeah. have the Enchantress to ruin his lane. And then on top of it, this Tidehunter pick. A lot of times people think of the Nine as, oh, okay, I'm just going to destroy the Tidehunter. But they know the lane's going to be good because they have the Ench, which right. gets around that interaction. And I think part of what annoyed Bet Boom in that game one was the team fighting single target initiation against Tombstone Grab. Tidehunter is the biggest AoE initiation in the game. Right. So okay. he makes these single target saves very difficult. It's like one of the reasons Tide has really been great versus Oracle or Shadow Demon. I think if this Undyne's functioning in that way, you have to address that element of him. That is what the Tide Hunter should do. You go in, you ravage somebody, you can't throw him in that Tombstone unless it's already down. Sure. Speaking of Tombstone, they're going to use an early one here. Doesn't come close to getting a kill. And will very likely be taken down here somewhere. We'll see whether or not it gets denied, or maybe they're going to be forced out entirely as the lane pushes in pretty aggressively. So... Lotus on top of Sully. Back to bottom, Ace, who TP'd out earlier, now dies. Ooh, that is a bad death to have. Yeah, he's going to have to walk out to lane. 35 seconds left on that cooldown. That's why those little chases pay off. I mean, you didn't get him earlier, but you get him here, and now it's doubly as valuable as Nightfall is going to have a lot of free farm and a lot of time without that Beastmaster in the lane for gaming. This is not going to be that hyper-accelerated Beastmaster like it was game one. He is already no. decently far behind. And when you fall behind, it means... The time Tofu can take off the lane to go get stacks up is not as 
useful either. He oh, yeah. Sit there longer. That's so true. there's already zero stacks up in that triangle in four minutes. In the next three to four is generally when Gaming would get them, but if you're not winning the lane with this beast, he's going to have nothing to fall back on here. The hyper aggression in the kill department is paying off for Bet Boom. I didn't, we didn't, uh, at least I didn't see it. Maybe you did, but the uh, did. one thing I thought about was the Lich Juggernaut about, lane. I, I yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're so aggressive. <laughs> uh, I bet they won the fight over the Lotus Flower, right? Which has been pretty impactful when it comes to winning these side lanes. Okay, I actually didn't see that. <laughs> yeah. But I did, I'm going to say I saw it because I don't think anybody else saw it. Okay. So prove me wrong, you know? Sure, sure. So did they get it? No, I don't think they got it. <laughs> <laughs> I think Tofu got it. Okay, okay, okay. Either way, they're still winning the regen trade, and that is a good sign for Lich. I like Toronto Tokyo went to 2 0 1 2. I think the Frost Shield is just unnecessary mana usage on the lane. Like, this build is a lot more efficient. You're still going to get extra right clicks in off the pull, so you don't really lose too much damage. Sure. And again, I think their idea is maybe you get a TP cancel with the pull, but also if you don't kill Ace, if you just burn out his region here and put him in this position, he feels really bad. And now you have the levels for everything. I mean, uh, he is just feeding. Sorry, Avery. You're wrong about all of that. First and foremost... It's a dangerous thing to say. I might First and, and foremost... Leave. Stop what? Techie's Blast Off. Yeah, I mean, that helps. But they were not in a position where they were using that aggressively on a jug anyway. <laughs> How do you just blast off on a juggernaut? <laughs> you were just excited to prove me wrong. I was. But you didn't think about no, the No, I think step. you are wrong. This is, you didn't think about the final outcome here. Celery's dead. And six minute power runes are coming up. That is exactly why Celery was in that position in the first place, which really sucks. If Blast Off does land on Toronto, Tokyo, and oh, the kisses, wait a minute, wait a minute. He'll get one. Quinn, he'll be able to dodge a lot of the damage. Yeah, but that's Arcane Rune. More to more kisses for GPK. Oh, so that, that is nice. That is up again in 70 seconds here. That is going to feel really good. They're super happy with that trade. Also, denying that Arcane Rune from the Lesh feels even better here. As now he needs a bottle refill. And He's just going for it. I mean, why not? He has save here to fight with him. Uh, Maybe. Oh, the there hurricane back. That actually pushes Quinn out, gives him time to deal with the tombstone. A second blast coming through. It. Quinn, I don't think he expected this, these skills to be coming off cooldown so damn quickly. They're going to have another scatter blast for another kill. Double okay. for save. He's waiting around. He's like, you want some too, son? You want some of this? There's plenty more buckshot where that came from, son. <laughs> yeah, welcome to hell, brother. I'm going to chase you down. <laughs> He's going to cookie him. He's, He's going to get the kill. Wait, the blast off. It's up. Oh, is he gonna get it? Oh, the final scatter blast comes oh through, gets God. the kill. GPK will TP away. What a monster! That that is that is making up for that Roche in game one entirely. Gaming are really far behind now. He just he just put them all in the same grave. Says I only have to dig one for all of you, and it's it's called Arcane Rune. Do not let Grandma cook like that. Oh, she's not cooking. with an arcane room. She's cooking. The key, the kitchen is heating up here. Three K lead at seven and a half minutes versus gaming. That is a rare feat, and they have just put on a clinic in this early laning phase. And like I said, it's through the kills. Like they're not gonna sit yes. there and try and out CS you. They are going to slay you and push you behind to a point where you don't have the XP to compete with these skirmishes anymore. And all of a sudden, en Enchantress Lich. This is a very strong early game support duo that's going to continue to punish you with the extra levels they've gotten off of all these exchanges. Pure is entirely good on his own and is going to start hammering your tower soon. Gaming, they're in a rough spot. They do not have Ace to fall back on this game, and he has been their linchpin. I love that you point that out because, like, it does kind of click for me. Game and Gladiators, nope, they, they've been up before. 3K in eight minutes, easy. They do that all the time, but I feel like it's it's like, mm, yes, yeah, so we've managed to push the carry into the jungle and have denied their pulls. And we're, uh, <laughs> yeah. What is that impression, bro? You, you don't got to do <laughs> like, them dirty you know, like that. They're just, they're, they're just out of efficiency. Meanwhile, Bet Boom is like, kill, kill, kill. You know? I will take your soul. Transfer it to my bank account. Hey, kill your tower, too. Didn't even let him get the deny. Look at this wraparound, though. They're going for the kill on Quinn, but look at Pure. He turns around with a Ravage Meteor Hammer, and now Toronto Tokyo comes in from behind. Quinn didn't know that he was being stalked the entire way. Tidehunter, he's got that big shell. He don't care, man. That is a gank that gaming needed to get back in this game. Now you lose Lashrak again. He does not get Power Runes. Boots of Travel already up for GPK with no tower mid to have to stay there for. He's ready to join any sideline engagement, and you can't even enter these sidelines anymore if you're gaming. Nobody has bought him. Contesting Nightfall. 
He's going to have one of his ridiculously fast Battle Furies on the Jug, which he's looking really strong in the late game. This game might not even go there at this rate. 5k at 9 minutes. This has to be one of the largest deficits gaming have ever faced in recent memory here. This is a very steep hill to climb, and it's not looking much better in the short term as Tofu's going to run for his life, but Duraccio dies to save, and GPK on the boots to travel to the creep. He was spending all his time trying to kill a centaur, gave up on it, and still died anyway. GPK, bop, bop, bop. Mega kill. Five, zero, and three already. I mean, this is what the bots could do when you have the Enchantress, right? Now, all of a sudden, save is a huge threat on the map. Dude, just imagine if save wasn't getting the last hit for every kill him and GPK were a part of together. He might be able to stay on the team a bit longer, but yeah, you're G right. GPK legitimately would have like a godlike spree right now. He's probably mad about it. I think that's why he's angry on the camp. Yeah. Because we're seeing him kill. He doesn't even look happy with these kills. Dyer's top tower. I do feel like part of Bet Boom. Like we always see these interviews. Nightfall's always talking about. <laughs> I mean, that's just a zoning chain cross right there, and he got the four, so I respect that. I would respect it more if it was with the siege wagon push. That's a that sends a message though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's a message. Yeah, I that feel is like just you're a, an expert at sending it's messages. Be, yeah, it's because it's about all I did. You know, I, I was <laughs> I couldn't send him with the gameplay, so you gotta get creative and figure out another methods. Mm. That is a you know, there's no other way to say it. That is just a fuck you. <laughs> you don't deserve to be in this game anymore. I'm a chain frost your boar. Get the hell out of here. I'll see you in game three. That's what that says. I like it. Where's your stacks now, Ace? <laughs> where's your triangle now, son? Yeah, where's your where's your fast Agadim Scepter, Crimson Guard, Guardian Greaves? Actually, they are stacking triangle for him, so Ace is going to have a little catch-up farm. But the towers are being pushed down very fast. This is what the hammer plus the Ench Creep can do. You're going to lose Tier 2. You're going to lose Outpost Control. This lineup is happy to take all these early game fights. I really like the Snapfire pick for that reason. It Suddenly, you have this Snapfire Tide Hunter combo, which goes yeah. back to that patch where Snapfire got released. It got spammed in some of those early tournaments. This is a really strong mid-game combo, but when you play the snap mid and you get this fast bots, all of a sudden you can control the map as well. This lead isn't growing because of the triangle efficiency from gaming, but you're taking a lot of space and you're going to be able to use it pretty decently here because the jug is just about to hit that battle fury, and that is going to be so damn fast for Nightfall here. He's not going to need stacks. The whole map is his stack. Tier 2 at 12 minutes? That's basically what we're looking at here. Whether Duraccio denies it, I mean, he might as well. Pure can always come up and just Meteor Hammer it. I don't think you deny Tier 2s. Even though you know he's just going to come up and Meteor Hammer you make it? Him, you make him do it. Okay. Make him. I mean, I guess they do have the ward on the high ground to see him making that move, so yeah, normally maybe I think they'll you try could, and punish him. You could bait him on it. It's definitely an option. He will deny it here, though. Duraccio will claim that last hit. One of the only ones he's had in this game, and he's 0-2-0. He's zero, and zero. No early involvement <laughs> for him, but there is not a lot to be involved in right now. As nope. Gaming are searching for net worth anywhere they can get it, which is mega ancient stacks on that right side of the map. Ace eventually found some. Nope, not there, the other one. There we go. Ooh. I love watching me some ancients get farmed. A little bit of farm and chill action. This is the one thing I would have wished Bet Boom had done is contest the ancient stacking. Like, either have Toronto Tokyo just go in and sentry block the camps, or get vision on them and contest them later. Because this should be your understanding of gaming as a team, right? No yeah. matter what happens, they're going to have stacks, especially for the Beastmaster, especially when he can use the boars for him. This is a this is a nice window back into, you know, a comeback here for gaming. If they can connect that item into something of a fight for Ace. He's just still doing stacks, man. You gotta contest this with the strength you've had off this early game. This Spending all their time on the wrong side of the map, perhaps. I mean, they did get a decent amount out of it. It's not like they're falling behind, but I, I think the window where you could have just ultra punished Ace here sure. was open. And then this game's just over, because now there's a chance. You even have a chance back into this game. Yeah, I mean, that's the difference, right? It's like a 2k difference just off of the neutrals. Yeah. And Pure, he's extracted from elsewhere. He's still very happy in this game. This Tidehunter has done his job. We'll have that fast blink build as well to force the fights. And Battle Fury done for Nightfall. That is a 12, 13 minute Battle Fury jug. Incredibly yeah, maybe part scary. of it is they just didn't want to draw any attention to Nightfall. You know? Like, lit him yeah, be off in his, like, 1v0 lane, basically. Yeah, a little late to the Wisdom Rune. Quinn will get out of there. And barely dodge the cookie. That would have been a kill for sure. You have Kiss's follow-up, Chain Frost follow-up. 
Now they will steal some of those Ancients away. But Ace did recover. Like, he was looking out of this game. He was. He's back. He is indeed working towards that Helm of the Overlord, but for now, just Helm of Dom. Nightfill is still looking for his first Omni Slash of the game, though gaming gladiators are just dodging him everywhere he goes. But if they dodge, it means he can take those ancient camps now. Pure will keep the mid lane pushed in. It's very unlikely they're ever going to be able to really gank him and punish him too much. No, that was supposed to be the Lashrac, and we saw how that went earlier. Yep. They're going to find Celery doing a little farming in the backwoods. Clean him up. Nice part about the uh, Boots of Travel. This play doesn't feel nearly as good for gaming gladiators when GPK can just bounce right back into uh, a lane somewhere. Yeah, I think the bots really helps this team because the Jug and the Tide are pretty static course. So the fact that GPK can make these small plays and they can still keep the map pressure up, they can bring this bots into a counter gank is super nice. Yeah. It's eliminating some comeback potential from gaming. Like even if you smoke on pure, you're going to TP a hero and the Snapfire is instantly going to be there herself and then that gank does not look so easy. That's why gaming are just trying to out efficiency them right now, which I mean, it's kind of happening. I'm honestly impressed that this lead has not grown for Bet Boom despite the battle for coming online. It speaks to how well these guys stack and abuse the one portion of the map they had right now. Giving themselves a decent shot in this game despite the rough early game, 13 and one. Yeah, and if you're not shutting them down now, I'm, I'm looking at Bet Boom as like, there's no incoming items that I feel like changes the current state of the game too much. So I Not feel like Game and Gladiator is no. going to keep doing this for the next 10 minutes. I mean, the Blink on Pure can. They can find the opening, start getting some core kills or force the fight. But there probably isn't some super early high ground here for Bet Boom. The Roshan could come on pretty fast, though, depending on how big Nightfall gets. And that's the thing. Like, these items are not super aggressive timing items, but the faster you get this Jug Battle Fury, the faster you get to Manda, this hero just gets out of control. And he's not a carry that is supposed to have that start. He's like a late game carry with the Blade Dance talent. So the fact that Nightfall is this far ahead is, it's just a huge cushion for Bet Boom. And they're gonna poke high ground here. This is not really a threat. Yeah, they're trying a sneaky catch here. Pure, I think, wanted Duraccio to like aggressively show maybe on the low ground and then surprise him with the Ravage. But Duraccio actually displays a good amount of discipline here. In gaming, they're cutting the map. They're in the enemy jungle here. Ace continuing to farm up, push towards that Helm of the Overlord. Bet Boom will claim another tier two. Already have that outpost control. This will solidify that dire jungle as they're right. I would like to see a quick smoke gank though to find the Beastmaster or at least kick him out of the area. I think that's the last piece of the puzzle here. We got full map control. There's a little techies cam. Yeah. I think we're gonna see a lot of tofu cutting waves in this game. Vision control, also a big point of contention here for Bet Boom. If they can get deep obs up on the side lanes, I think those are the most valuable for right, right now. Sure. I actually don't really like the obs around mid because I don't think gaming are ever in a position where they can run down mid lane this game. Sure, and they, they want to play the outskirts of the map yes. where it's hardest for you to catch yeah. them. So right? devote the obs there, and you're going to have to contest the Hawk Vision this game too. So as much as you can get up to see where the Beastmaster goes, the happier you're going to be because he's the biggest kill. Take the sure. Beastmaster off the map, suddenly there's not Hawks to protect the other cores. The map just collapses very fast. Primal like, Roar into stun would have been the combo. I'm actually surprised they didn't bait that. Yeah, honestly, with Toronto Tokyo ready to go behind him. Yeah, I don't think there's any way Nightfall dies there with Healing Ward out and a little Frost Shield with some Kisses counter initiation. Again, Ace is going to skirt around the sides. This is the move you have to try and stop or at least get some objective punish if this is happening. They'll steal some more Ancients and go for the last tier too, but the lead has shrunk a little bit in the last 10 minutes here. Yeah. That is how hard it is to close out this Beastmaster map from gaming. I do like this move, right? They're taking the tier two, but it's actually just a feint. They're going to go for the Ravage Kisses, Duraccio. I mean, when they're just dodging you like this, I guess you can use these long cooldowns whenever you want. However you want. Say hello to Malron, my friend. <laughs> are you? Are you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've heard Malron. <laughs> What is the lore? Is that is oh, that what the, is the lore? Did you ask for the lore, Cap? I did. I did. Did you ask for some grand finals lore? Or we have a little. 
Yeah, did you do some special Honestly, research I, for at this Grand point, Finals? I enjoy the bait more than the lore, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, like the thrill of the chase more than the, the catch, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you would have been severely disappointed if I didn't ask about Yes, it. I would have. Okay. But I knew you would because well, you're a good friend. <laughs> yeah, Malron, the tentacular. So he's the tentacle guy that... Uh, That's right. Okay. He's the cephalopod. Is he, is, he, that is, is he like a god? He's the abyssal god of okay. uh, leviathans and other mer people. Hmm. So, you know. Is he the one that took sends, down Kunkka's ship? Tidehunter sends you down to Malaron. I see. I see. Yes, it is rumored that that is. But never confirmed. Can I get your opinion on whether or not Kunkka is a ghost or not? He's not a ghost. Hmm. Good try. 14 to 1. It sounds like a big lead for Bet Boom. After all, they just got a free Roshan. Surely this game is in the bag for them, but only a 3,000 net worth lead. And we have seen Gaming Gladiators make big comebacks before. One slight problem is going to be that you feel like Juggernaut is the biggest bad late game hero of maybe the entirety of the roster. I mean, I I've heard you talk up Juggernaut late game so much at this point. I just think that 45 minutes he automatically wins. I mean, I'll put it this way. Juggernaut is not terribly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You do not kill him in three seconds, and his scale is a lot more formidable. He's not as timing dependent. Like, this is a 20-minute push that Nightfall's happy to join with Healing Ward and that SNY tanking him up. Yeah. But this is not something where it has to go like this, or he's not going to continue to get stronger. So, Nightfall, he's going to be very scary in the late game. This hero with the Blade Dance talent in five or six slots is one of the strongest carries in the game outside of maybe Phantom Lance or a Morphling. He is very comfortable in this position. He has team fight to back him up. He has nukes. He has another scaling support in the save Enchantress, which, like, honestly, if you go back to that, save was doing a lot of work in game one. Yeah. If that game had snowballed a little bit more for them, this Ench might have been a ban that game were afraid of. And so they get it back. He's going to continue to power out the damage and help the Jug, along with those Snapfire talents, push into the late game. I think Bet Boom very comfortable right now. They'll claim a tier three and a half of both of these racks, but neither of them completed and smoke back in with the Ravage Blink. I like this. I mean, if you're willing to push it high ground before. Yeah, do you just blind? Why go? not just try? Want to drop a ward, get some vision, and then just let Pure do the rest. Don't Celery, his positioning breaking the smoke could be very crucial. Spot the heroes. It's again daytime, so they do have a fair amount of information about these heroes. How do you start a fight if you're gaming, though? That's the problem. This Jug can siege for a while. And yeah. drop the Tombstone defensively. They're really just trying to stall out this Aegis period, but there's two and a half left. You're going to have to take this if Bet Boom want to force it. Rupture on save? Yeah, I mean, his heal is going to run out. He's just taking your racks. He is, and he's got a four staff ready to go. Oh, not gonna pop it now, the, the Ravage window. goes out. The Bloodstone already off without from Quinn, but it's not good enough. First not slide, down for the Juggernaut. Oh, the Force Staff! It got him out of the Blast Off. Tofu's gonna lay his mind. It's not enough to be able to kill any of these Force. The While back. the Omni Slash, it's gonna bring down Ace. Now he comes back into it with Jirachi already low. Buy. He is buffed up, and he's gonna have to win the next part of this fight. Cannot Otherwise, spin TP. There's still Roar here, so you have to watch on your way out, and you used all your I ults. Mean, are they gonna back out? That's Looks like they're sticking the around for the last barracks. I mean, Quinn has buyback here. Back door is in. But does Quinn want to buy for the fight? Primal That's Roar, the big Primal question. Roar is going to be used now onto the Juggernaut, but they've already stunned up the Beastmaster and Gaming Gladiators struggling to be able to defend him. Nightfall Blast is not off to going out, but look at Save. He's doing so much damage to Ace. He's going to commit, but he can't quite kill him. Duraccio gets that kill first, it's and they will not be able to get weird. the barracks. Bet Boom have overextended themselves. Didn't lose too much for it. Mind you, they only lost save. Got a lot of buybacks out of uh, Game of Gladiators. So, honestly, that was fantastic for them. How little they lost for that. They did not get the Melee Rax, and they did not get the Lashrak buyback, though. And I, those are the two most valuable here. I think the Ace buyback, you're definitely nice with it. You're not sad about this push at all, because you got everybody out on top of it. And Nightfall didn't have to TV back, so he got to just stay out on the map and Ooh. maximize that time and double Wisdom Rune into a Tormentor. It's going to continue to push that lead. But that was not a GG push for GG here. Yes. Which that could have been, been, been yes. crippling like if, gaming gladiators, but this is recoverable. Like if Flesh has to buy and he dies again, then that might just be the game. And the Bloodstone will trade out a life here 
for Nightfall. It's pretty nice. If that stun connects, you might be able to take down Pure, and then you're looking at a decent engagement. And then you have to choose on that. We didn't see it off screen, but Duraccio and Ace had to choose which one of them took that <laughs> Omni Slash. Yeah. And uh, I think Duraccio said, no, I, I insist. I insist, my friend. <laughs> no, he... <laughs> you, you got it. You first. Very nice from Nightfall. But, of course, back door kicking in. That Aegis push did get stalled out from the Tombstone. From the Glyph. And you do not get that melee racks. Also have to keep in mind the sustain that is going into the Bet Boom lineup here. Like you are have this pipe done on pure, but this pipe is protecting heroes that have healing ward behind them, have enchanter seal behind them. Lich Frost armor. Plus a I was gonna say Pavis, but Toronto Kid did not go Pavis. He's going Aether Lens, a much more aggressive build for the Lich. On top of Eye of Vizier, this is going to be some insane cast range on the pull. He might just be able to start fights at that point. Yeah. Or maybe he just feels a little bit more comfortable sitting, you know, farther in the back, but still being able to get those Frost Armors or maybe the save from the Blast Off or something like that. I mean, this, this build on Lich definitely feels the best. Like, from a greedy standpoint. Yeah. It makes Lich function at top caliber because cast range on this hero is just ridiculously good. But it is a little greedy. You're not building an aura. You're not building the Pavis. You're not building something that helps. You're jugging your Snapfire push high ground, which is kind of what they're doing here. That's yeah, they're trying to end the game. Right. So you would assume utility would be the right choice. Yeah. And he's done it almost every other time. So it is interesting that Toronto Tokyo feels like he just wants to play for the Sinister Gaze. Maybe it is about catching that techies on the leap. In. I think it's the one factor this build definitely helps a lot with. Nightfall will push it up again. No Aegis, but 25 minute mark. He has Butterfly completed here. This is a ridiculously fast third item Butterfly for a Jug, and Nightfall is afraid of nothing. It says, you can roar me. You can rupture me. I'm still going to take your base. The extra, they got the extra little Shredder attacks, so these buildings are going to drop that much faster, not just for the extra bit of damage, but the extra bit of minus armor. And this push was just way easier than the it was. push, honestly. Yeah. Gaming just gave it up, trading for some net worth on Ace, but that's about it. The rest of them came back. I mean, this is their Helm of the Overlord plus the Greaves timing for gaming, too. This is generally when their lineup would want to be strong in the 5 on 5 So the fact that Bepham were taking Raxes during this period, that feels extra good. Yeah. I think you're going to reach, like, a little peak here for gaming gladiators in a couple minutes, but... Then about five minutes after that peak, you're looking at GPK closing in on that 20 talent. Yep, the right. That's a, that's a massive in. one. The Juggernaut, you know, Null Fire, then, you know, Omni Slash is a death sentence, no matter what you do. That's what I'm saying. The, the scale here for Vepum is pretty crazy. Yeah. And the thing is, their scale is really good at taking the man up one-on-ones versus the Bloodseeker or versus the Lashrat. Like, with the Healing Ward behind these heroes, the Jug can stand there, the Snapfire can stand there, and just pummel you with the physical damage, and you don't have a great answer to that. There's no Frost Shield on your side. There's like a Techie's Disarm. That's about it. So this Bloodstone is really going to have to do some work. I think that's why Quinn was thinking about the Ghost up there here. He's really debating what he wants, because you want the Ghost up there for the Omni Slash, for the Snapfire, Talents coming in later, but then at the same time, you're going to have to deal with the Nullifier and the Jug anyway. By the time you get there, it's not going to feel good. I think gaming really want to just get these PKBs out and try and win a team fight off that for the second Roche, which Quinn is... Not going to have his BKB for. He's just going to have to blink in and pray that Bloodstone was enough. But Ace has his. Duraccio has his. This is probably the best time you're going to get in a long, long time for this game. Especially if you want to come back and take this Roshan away from Bet Boom. Remember what happened game one. That second Rosh. Gaming pulled a Bloodseeker out of their hat. And Mjolnir done yeah. as well. There's a lot aligning here. This gold lead is not significant if Gaming can find the opening and get their BKBs off at the right point in time. Okay, they know that they're in this jungle area. The Lord, fully in view. They don't really want to go on Nightfall, though, with that Frost Shield behind him. I don't think he gets bursted, yeah, especially gets, with Healing Ward already out. With just the items, it's even less. That net worth lead, they're only up by 3k in the actual items that are being used in this yeah, fight. That's why this is a very even. But Nightfall, he has a butterfly. He has Elven Tunic. It's a lot of evasion. To right-click through for Duraccio. I mean, you have Mjolnir to help you, but it's not doing what an MKB does. Round and round we go. This favors gaming, though, because they have the ward in the lane. And they that do. boom place there is on the hills. Yeah, they Toronto is going to have to break. Nightfall knows they're in here. I, do you just go in blind? This is this is tough when there's hawk vision and you can't okay, see the trees. Okay, going to be able to get some vision. 
but not enough for a jump, not enough for a kill either. Now they get the initiation the onto the side. They do manage to lock down this snap fire dead instantly. A one for one trade off core for support to the favor of Game and Gladiators. And they're just running the summons in. Tombstone dropped as well. GPK has buyback here. He does, and he has boots to travel too. So you don't want to overcommit if you're gaming, but at the same time, your tombstone's wearing out. And the, he might just respawn at this rate. 30 seconds is not that long when you're in a Roche standoff. Yeah, if not now, then when? That is the question. Also, your buildings are taking chip damage this entire time. Yep. Your tier fours are getting hit. You've lost a tier, half a tier four already. Roar is up in 20 seconds as well. Maybe Ace just wants to wait for that? Get the vision with the Hawk. They see Toronto Tokyo. He's in a bad spot. He tries to think about the portal. Not going to make it. Gem going to be dropped down. Now they buy back. Now they go for it. The immediate Ravage is going to be used onto Duraccio. So he's going to die, and he does not have buyback. So Gaming Gladiators now have to forfeit this Roshan. Just a smart play by Pure. He knows Duraccio does not have BKB here. So the second you're on him, there's no dodging that Ravage. It's just a guaranteed kill. And the buyback's too strong here for Bet Boom. Gaming are going to have to give it up despite hitting that Mjolnir. They cannot win the team fight. I don't know, that, that's a hard call, right? Like, that's a very difficult call to make in the moment. Do you try and push up that gate high ground when you know there's potential for the GPK buyback? Right, yeah. Or do you try and wait it out for another war, and then you're stuck in a situation where they're respawning anyway? Roche wasn't even up, so even if you win that fight, it can be awkward, but that boom are for sure happy with that based on how that initial exchange went, because they don't really lose much, and now they get to push towards this Nightfall Nullifier, which is a huge item in this game. Yeah, he pretty much has it. As soon as they take the Roshan and get the Aegis, I imagine he'll buy out for it. Game are going to contest. They are smoking back. Did get gem off that from Toronto, Tokyo, so that was some extra network swing. It's got to be a blind jump here. Can Tofu get here in time? It's not looking like it. I mean, can Duraccio? He's so far. This is a fight without your Bloodseeker, and you're not here in time. I think you. this is not a go. They've already killed the ward. They know Gaming Gladiators is here. Bet Boom will smoke up and then confidently push behind Nightfall. I mean, is this your fight? This seems so difficult. This looks like a terrible engagement. If they have to go through Nightfall first, it is terrible. They're trying to find the back line. They're trying to, but they've already slipped away, passed through the trees behind Nightfall once again, repositioning behind their carry always. And that is two big items done for Bet Boom. Full Gleipner done for GBK. Extra lockdown, extra Look damage. Quinn's positioning. The smoke nullifier. is breaking onto him. Nightfall. He knows oh. he's around here. Almost caught him, too. That was a bold smoke break. Yeah. Very bold, my friend. It will pay off. I mean, it goes to show how desperate Gaming Gladiators is to be able to get to the back line, just like they did on the Dire Side Roshan fight where they went for GPK first. Yeah, there's no way you go on Nightfall first. Absolutely no way. Not just because he has Aegis. It's just not the target you want to go on. The counter initiation will guarantee come out. You need to find the supports or GPK, who is the squishiest. He has the highest ratio of damage to squishiness, you know? Sure. Yeah. Well, Toronto Tokyo almost dies there, but he will be rewarded for his bravery with a nice little Aghanim shard. And he has the cast range to use it. So now he's really happy with his itemization here as it didn't cost them too much on the early pushes and this greedy Aether Lens plus Psychic Headbane with the cast range for all those Lich spells. He's going to guarantee get them off in a lot of the fights. Yeah, and I'm just looking at Quinn who was thinking about the Ghost Scepter, thinking about the BKB. Now he's thinking about the Shivas. If he doesn't go the BKB, that Lich, it's going to be some serious damage. It's straight up Ravage on the Slash. Bye-bye, Quinn. Now Damn they do the a buyback on him. And they're going to have to take this fight with that buyback as Nightfall. This is he very is deep. a bulwark. Duraccio is committing deep into you. Pure, pure. Oh, he's going to he be passed over it. the cheese. He gets the cheese. Duraccio is still committed for it. And he does manage to get that kill. The Sinister Gaze comes a half second too late. We mall Nightfall. He's going to lose his first life. And Duraccio is just going him down. Once again, the Bloodseeker is making the difference. Oh, the spin just before the blast off could connect. Nightfall will get away. And Bet Boom, honestly, do not lose that much. No, but that... That did not feel great. I mean, you get the Lashrak by, but the way that fight went was pretty scary, honestly. I don't know if Duracho should be in a position where he is running through you like that. He has looked terrifying on this hero of the series, and he's almost to an Ags again. He just ran in solo. That's why it looks so weird to me. Like, he ran in solo BKB'd and just killed your Tidehunter through a cheese on top of it. 
And somehow that was like a decent engagement for gaming. It really did feel like an overcommitment of sorts, but... I thought, yeah, I thought it was going to turn against him, but he knows his strength here and just powers through. I mean, part of it is that I think that Ravage Omni-Slash use, it's worth it if you get the buyback out of him, so on and so forth. Which but once you do use it, you are limited in how you deal with the Bloodseeker, yeah, right? You don't, you don't really have any itemization to deal with Duraccio when he just runs in like that. You don't have Halberds. You don't have an Abyssal Blade. Yeah. You don't have any real glimmers either. Like, nothing's stopping the Bloodseeker from going on to this Tidehunter and just chunking through him with the percentage. So that is the part I think Bet Boom, if they can fix that, then they're super happy in these fights. But that also goes back to, like, the greedy itemization here. Every hero on Bet Boom is pretty much itemizing for themselves. Yeah. Which is... I think this is their low point. This is where maybe they are closest to being on even footing with gaming gladiators, but you give them two minutes, you're about to finish up. Ags on Enchantress, Ags on Juggernaut. You're gonna finish the you're gonna get the level twenty talent relatively soon on Snapfire, who's you know, level eighteen closing on nineteen pretty quickly. If that kicks in, then you're super happy with these builds. But I agree the the point to punish right now is here for gaming because they just have more utility. They have the Glimmers, they have the Aura from the Beastmaster, you have some Sustain and Greaves on Celery. That's big, right? If we're looking at Bet Boom's side, I mean, you have the Pipe on Pure, and that's it. That, that's, yeah. That is literally it. It is Aetherlens Greedy for Toronto Tokyo, and like you said, the Hurricane Pike Ags with a Blitz Knuckle for save. It's, it's just every man wants to be the hero and deal the damage. Sometimes that backfires, because then you're giving a free BKB reign to Duraccio, which is what we saw. That's Tundra, Tundra would never. No, Looking at this is, bed boom item inventory. I mean, if no, if snaking and Soxa itemize like this, one of them would be immediately kicked from the team. I can guarantee you that. Owie would say, "You didn't want to build a drum? Well, I'll drum your exit, my friend." <laughs> Instead, drop the beat for your kick. Uh, well, these little things matter, though. Like, imagine you have a glimmer there for pure. Eye. He gets the cheese off, he's glimmered. Sure. You waste yeah. three or four seconds as Bloodseeker BKB. We'll see if it comes back to bite him. They're still in a very solid position. They are continuing to scale up. That Lashrak buyback was very expensive for Quinn. Kind of cost him his BKB window here. Now he's just thinking about going back for Shiva. Still unsure of what the best item is in this game. He's going to have to deal with a lot. You have to deal with the, the stun jumps where you're getting Omni Slash. You have to deal with the Enchantress impetusing you in the middle of the fight. You might have to deal with a Chain Frost Bounce off a of Spire with the Mega Cast Range. So you kind of wanted BKB to deal with the supports, but you also want some more armor to deal with the cores. No easy pathways here for Quinn, and it's going to put more pressure on Taraccio to survive in those engagements. Again, if I'm Bet Boom, I'm just going to itemize to deal with the Bloodseeker here. I feel like if I take him out of the equation, you can deal with the rest, and your scale should be more than good enough to push you into this late game. I feel like um, part of the reason that I really like this Aghanim Scepter lately on the Bloodseeker is it becomes a whole lot harder to itemize against that hero. Right? He gets significantly tankier, so your single target focus of like Omni Slash and stuff like that doesn't work out nearly as well because Blood Mist is giving you so much heal and shield. Uh, you know, your like disarms don't function quite as well. Like just general staying power and tankiness of Bloodseeker goes way up, which is I feel like sometimes where he falters, you know? Like, sometimes he doesn't look good in fights where he can't just immediately get a kill. But this Aghanim Scepter gives him a lot better ways to play team fights and shores up those weaknesses. He definitely has a way larger window to just stick in there, and it's like the ultimate cage fighting item. <laughs> like, when you uh, when you go in and you lock yourself in that cage, which is like BKB to BKB, okay. fist to fist, chin to chin. I mean, you want this Ags on your side, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Bloodseeker versus Juggernaut cage match. Yeah. Which one's Elon Musk and which one is... Uh... I knew you were going to ask that. <laughs> I knew you were going to ask that. And I was going to make a joke about the other thing. I'm not allowed to make a joke about it because that's where my mind went. But <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave that for other people to figure out. Which one is Elon Musk and which is... This This question's going to get very political. I'm going to dodge that. I'm going to decline <laughs> to answer. I'll leave that for Jenkins on the panel. Okay. All right. Well, we'll, we'll... panel, remember that question. I think Jug does win it. But the Basher and Abyssal timing for Bloodseeker can be pretty scary. Like, if Duraccio can get to some late-game items here, it's not just that straightforward. Especially if you don't have Omni Slashes up. 
Nightfall get ruptured and run away here, but he doesn't have healing wards. On the splash, on to Duraccio, but there is a lot of units to tank this up. Double BKBs too, so the Kisses aren't doing anything. Nightfall, the Ravage is now they down. Oh, Ravage! Pure almost went for it there, but immediately got stunned up, and that's okay. BKBs are still kind of up. That's another lane, though. This is two lanes down for gaming, and Nightfall is just going straight down mid. This is without that Aegis. This is kind of a risky push if it Yeah, backfires. he's taking a lot of damage. He's got to respect Ooh. this. You definitely have to respect the poke coming out here from gaming. Shiva's done for Oh, got him with the tentacle. And the swift slash squid yeah, with the nullifier. He can't stand toe-to-toe -to -toe against that. The Shiva's, really the BKB, line. the Ghost Scepter, none of it is enough of an answer to this single target. And now you have level 20 on the GPK Snapfire. So that physical damage just ramped up considerably. This is your last glyph for your last lane. Your building for your life. Back. Which one is it going to be? Gaming Gladiator, Swiss Slash, bouncing over, sticks on to Tofu, Ravage, almost hitting him. Connects on to Ace and Taracio. They'll finish them both off. Buyback only available for one. Celery tries to slow him down, but without the one, without the two, without Quinn, without Duraccio, they do not have a way to be able to deal with a five-mana bet. Boom, still going strong. They're going to call GG. One. This series is now evened up. One last tentacle surprise for the road. I'm going to send him down into those depths. Pure wins again on his Tide Hunter.